Hi everyone, this is Terry. Yesterday I showed you how to digitize your Magic 8 half square triangles. The formula for that is to take your finished size of your block and add 7 eighths of an inch to it. Multiply that 3.7 eighths, for instance if I have a 3 inch block times 2, and that will give you 7 and 3 quarters. Now that's the size of the squares that you will be working with to create these Magic 8 half square triangles. The beauty of this is you create eight triangles at once. Now I had a viewer on YouTube that made a suggestion yesterday after I had posted my videos. Sometimes you have a dumb moment and you don't think about the fact that there are better ways of doing things. So I really do appreciate their comments. I do read all the comments that are posted. And if you ever have a suggestion, please share it with me. So the first thing I want to do is to open up the file that I had created yesterday. And what I'm going to do is I'll just delete several of the objects in that file from my sewing order. And what I have here is a square that is 7 and 3 eighths inches. If you want to see that square, you can select it. And I'll right click on it. I'll go to numerical setting and size and right now I'm in metrics and I need to change it to inches and click on it again. So we'll go back. Let me select it and deselected it inadvertently. You need to have those white crosshairs, that arrow, right click, go to numerical setting and size. Now if you go down to the width and height you want to select the second icon and right now maintain aspect ratio is set but uh, if, if, if I had digitized something first and I did not want to maintain the aspect ratio I would deselect that. I'll go ahead and cancel and you can see let's go back to metric this was digitized at 3.0 millimeters. Now the, the viewer's suggestion, it was really smart, and I, I was not thinking, was to create a, a block and then rotate it. So I've selected a larger frame, so I have the advantage of having the grid, and what I want to do is to select this block and now go to home, go to rotate flip and rotate 45 degrees. So I'll type 45 and choose OK. The nice thing about this is it puts this on point. That's a, a quilting term that you use. Now we'll continue. So we'll go ahead and deselect it. We'll go back to the shapes tool. We'll select the open straight line and I want a blue thread, I already have that, and I want to keep my run pitch at three millimeters. Now what I can do is I can actually make sure that I'm right on point by clicking at the zero mark and go down to the bottom and click again, double click, and I produce my first line. And we'll do the same thing across the, the side and we'll double click and again you can clean these up if you want and I'll show you that we'll clean up everything at once. The next thing that we'll do is we'll go in and we'll change our thread color again. This time we want it to be red and we do want to digitize in a straight line but we want our run pitch to be two. And this is where we're, uh, we are digitizing the lines that are going to be our sewing lines. So I will go back and I can either leave it in millimeters or go to inches. In millimeters, a quarter of an inch is 6.35. In inches, it's going to be 2.52 because you're your software really does think more in terms of millimeters. You can't put in a perfect uh, 0.25. So what I'll do is I'll double click and now I have a sewing line and all I'm doing is following that grid mark. 
I really do appreciate that suggestion. Now, I'm not right on that, so let me press this, the right mouse key, and that deselected it, and let me go back. And again, I want to click and come down and, uh, uh, and double click. And now we'll go across by clicking and double clicking. And we'll do that one more time. Now normally when you're sewing these, what you do is you sew a scant quarter of an inch. So when I sew, uh, if I was sewing, if I drew these, I would sew just inside that line. Now it looks like I may not have this one line uh, digitized correctly. All I need to do is to select the line I want to delete. So I'll select that one. And while it's selected, I'll press the delete key and I can just re-digitize that again by going to shapes. I'll select the outline uh, with the running stitch and go back on the line. You can always zoom in if you need to be able to see that better. Okay, now it's time to clean up. And it looks like some of these other ones probably need to be adjusted a little bit. But for the sake of this video, I'm really wanting to show you how I rotated this. So to clean them up, we'll select the first line. And you can see that it's now selected. What I want to do is go to the Home tab. Then I want to zoom in, and I want to zoom in up here at the top. And this is where you can definitely see where there's something that's off. Let's go over and let's choose the select node. And let's select this line here. And what we'll do is we'll just straighten it up. You can move it right on that line and definitely you can see it. I really do appreciate this suggestion and I know you do too. So let's straighten this one up and we'll do the same thing on all of the lines and clean them up a little bit. Now let's go ahead and scroll across and we'll slide over here to the right and look at it. And on these, I have them fairly close. We'll select the first one. We'll move that point back. We'll select the second one. We'll move it so it's right there at that angle. Because one of the things that's important is to, to make sure you, that you have precise lines when you're quilting. All right. Now we'll go ahead and move back. I remember when I first started quilting and I really didn't understand the importance of being precise and you could tell it on, on the first things I quilted. Okay, this line here looks okay and we'll just go ahead and select this point and we want to move it all the way down to that yellow line and now we'll select this one and we have that. All right, and let's look at this other corner. If you happen to zoom in and you cannot find something, go back and choose Zoom to Selected Object. That way you can get back to where you need to be. Take your, your Zoom tool and go on and zoom in. Let's go back and select those nodes. And... Let's select this line, move that back, we'll click on this node, straighten that up, and this one we'll just move it back a little. All right, so now one of the things, we'll go ahead and change to inches, and let me show you something. So let's measure from this point to the center line and if you look in your lower left-hand corner down here, and it, it, you'll be able to see the measurement. It was a perfect quarter of an inch. So there it is right there. And before we go, let me go ahead and let's select everything by choosing Select All. And what we want to do is let's zoom back out to Selected Object Zoom. Let's go to the Rotate Flip. 
And now we want to rotate this again another 45 degrees, put 45 degrees. And now this is complete. I can go back and select my hoop size that I had before, which I believe was my nine and a half by nine and a half. And now I'm ready to save this. Since I already named this and I've enhanced it, I'll go ahead and do File, Save As. And what this will allow me to do is to overwrite that. And I'll overwrite it. It'll ask me, do I want to do this? And I'll say yes. And I want to thank you for your time today. And again, thank you to the viewer who made this uh, recommendation. I appreciate it. Thanks and have a great day.